Hello and welcome to the Eileen Silverman Show. I'm your host Eileen and on this week's program we feature University of Florida Performing Arts Director Brian Jose providing us with a sneak peek to the 2023-24 season. Plus we learn more about how the University of Performing Arts enhances our community through cultural opportunities in North Central Florida, bringing moments of meaning to life. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us for our program. I'm delighted to introduce my guest, Brian Jose, Director, University of Florida Performing Arts. And Brian, it's a delight and a pleasure to have you join us. I've been looking forward to this opportunity once again, and especially since I attended the preview of the new upcoming season that was held uh, recently. Um, at the Phillips Center, when I see the videos and you add your commentary to each of the performances in this mm -hmm. brochure, it's quite exciting. You, you have a vibe to the whole thing oh. that just really gets me going. I go, oh, I want to see that. I want to see that. Oh, what about that one? I got to see that too. So applause to you. Well, thank you. <laughs> I, I love what I do. So I, yeah, I, it shows. I, I'm, glad it shows. That, I'm glad that it does show. And, it's a great opportunity, the preview, to, to share the performances, but to give some context. Why are they valuable? Why might you want to spend your hard-earned dollars? And your time. To attend, exactly right. Yes, and quite often there are people I recognize, shows from Broadway that I've seen or want to see, and then there's people I've never heard of, and when I come a uh, step away from that night, I go, oh, now that I've heard Brian talk about them, I'm going to attend. I'm going to branch out and explore more of what you are bringing here to the main stage. Well, you're spot on, Eileen, because we're a multidisciplinary presenter. That's our fancy way of saying we do everything, right? <laughs> we do. So, so yeah. in music, we do everything from classical to hip hop, jazz to folk to indie rock, and then, of course, dance across the spectrum, and the same with theater. So uh, what we bring to the stage is a manifestation of, of what we're trying to achieve. You know, I, yes. our, our purpose is to bring moments of meaning to life. And you get the double entendre that. And I love that. Right. <laughs> it's our job to bring to the stage those moments that are important. They need to be experienced, but it's also our job to make them crackle with life. Yes, yes. Um, a, bit of, a bit of both. It's what attracts us to performances. There's nothing quite as exhilarating as a live performance. Yes, and we're working on a, a set of performances that have become our most popular. They're called Upstage. Oh, I love them, yes. And Best date night in it, Gainesville. <laughs> I, thank you, I think it is. And, and Upstage, if for your viewers who aren't familiar with it, is, is uh, the idea is everyone's on the stage, the performer, of course, but also the audience. And there's food and drink. And younger, yeah, younger, younger people don't see themselves as audience. That word doesn't mean anything anymore. They see themselves as participants. And upstage allows you to be part and parcel of that moment on the stage. It does. It changes everything. And then you're really interacting. And you get you have the opportunity for two different shows per night. Right. There's a seven o'clock and a nine o'clock. Exactly. Set. Or d'oeuvres or dessert. Right. <laughs> And sitting at little round tables and, and a cash bar yes and it's just it's it's like being at a nightclub well that's what we were going for is the great is. new york jazz clubs like birdland or the village vanguard that and i get that and i enjoy it and, and you're back home in your own bed <laughs> <laughs> but but the takeaway is valuable for any performance, the takeaway is valuable, mm -hmm. but upstage you, you communicate with, you're closer to your friends or people mm -hmm. that you know, that you recognize or don't, so you can interchange more. And for every conversation you have that is around a live performance, you just learn something. You, you pick up little parts of life that are valuable and add meaning. 
And I, I, you're like right. You're saying, and, yes. and I think in upstage, it's per, there's that particular gravity because you're also partly there with the you're there with the performer. Yeah. And they're really speaking to you, you know, and, and you, you you get that moment where everything else disappears and it's just you and the performer. And that's magic. Yeah, I, I love how you, yes, I agree with that. And I know we're going to take a quick break, but I we're going to have a sneak preview of what's coming for the 2023-24 season, plus more. And I know some of the first shows are upstage, and um, I'm looking oh, forward to that opportunity. Good. Thank you, Brian. And stay with us. We'll be right back. We're back talking about the University of Florida Performing Arts with director Brian Jose. And Brian, we talked about the preview and the upstage, so uh, let's get a little sneak preview of what's going to start the season. Great. And the season will begin upstage with Christian McBride. For my dime, he's the biggest name in jazz right now. Every jazzer plays with him. Fabulous upright bass player, amazing educator. Uh, so good with the audience, mellifluous voice. That's going to be a really special night upstage. That yes. opens the season. Uh, then Chucho Valdez, probably the biggest name in Cuban music, will be here. Through the season, we're going to explore Cuban pianists. But starting with Chucho, with wow, <laughs> over the top with his Grammys, he's uh, a legend. Oh, excellent. And part of the diversity you bring to your programming, seeing what's reflected in our community, reflecting it back with performances. Right. I think the performers are sort of manage the evidence of our yes. goal of ensuring that our audiences uh, look like the population of North Central Florida. Exactly right. We go from Chucho into a great upstage featuring Kat Edmondson. She's on the right there. Right. <laughs> the cover of our guide. She's a real throwback, a Billy Holiday sound to me. Uh, and that'll be a wonderful evening. From there, the next night is Joshua Kane. Oh, yeah. He does a mind-reading show called Borders of the Mind. I've seen him do it ten times. I have no idea how he does it. but That's it's even better. Yeah, perfect for upstage. And what's nice about that is I'd say ages 10 and up can totally get on board with that show. And see, I, I also enjoy that you're friends with a lot of these performers from all your years in in working in the performing arts but that's, that's that's one of the it. that's one of the benefits of, yeah. of what I do is I get to really connect and and have real relationships and friendships with some of these great minds and performers that I feel really lucky to do that you are but but we derive the benefit mm -hmm. okay keep going keep well going. Uh, you know we're also the bro I won't go through every show oh, but no. we're also I know. the too Broadway much, too house much. oh uh, for that's Gainesville. my favorite so, Mean Girls is coming up next yeah. year. Tina Fey's musical, uh, Come From Away. Oh, it's going to be right. so powerful, the story from 9-11. I think it brings out the best in humanity. I uh, agree. Uh, Jesus Christ Superstar, 50th anniversary, if you can believe oh, that. No, okay, <laughs> but I do. <laughs> and then, I'll uh, be there. And then uh, oh, yes. uh, On Your Feet, Get the, on. Yes. the, the uh, <laughs> Gloria and Emilio Estefan story. Uh, so those those musicals yeah, we can't will, always get to Broadway, but we can we enjoy the here. Broadway that's here. Of course, and I do. The major touring orchestras come here. Detroit Symphony Orchestra this year, and Academy of Saint Martin in the Fields with the great Joshua Bell. It's going to be excellent. We're going to focus on music of Africa this year. So Lady Smith Black Mombazo and Love You Youth Choir and Nobuntu, fabulous musicians from Zimbabwe, and of course. That it's our job to bring the big names in contemporary performance to the stage. Wynton Marsalis at Jazz at Lincoln Center Orchestra. Oh, Paul that's going to be great. And it's a whole big band holiday big show. Big band holiday. Man, some of the greatest players in the world. Uh, Paula Poundstone, the comedian. Okay, right at last. That. At last, God, yeah. <laughs> During COVID, geez, we had to postpone that three times, but, I think. But Harvey and I, Harvey and I have not given up. We're finally going to see her. <laughs> good, good. Uh, Pat Metheny. Oh, uh, a legend. Oh, Twenty Grammys. Can you believe it? across oh ten goodness. categories? No one's ever come close to anything like that. And chant, you know, we our job is to bring legends to the stage. Pearlman, Chenoweth, Renee Fleming. I put Pat Metheny in that group any day. Yes, I agree. Excellent. 
And then we'll have a full complement of upstage performances. We discussed that a little earlier, but I think we have 12 of them over the season. Right, you've expanded that opportunity so you can see there's an audience it, that appreciates that. Oh, it's it's hard to keep tickets for it. it yes, it, they're so yes. popular. If I do say so myself, and you can. <laughs> and yes, Parsons Dance Company. Oh. Uh, David Parsons Dance Company. Uh, they're going to do a piece on the evening, so the whole evening's special. But they do a piece called Cot, and I'll tell you this: I took okay. th my three boys when they were teenagers to see Cot. They still talk about it. Uh -huh. That's no mean feat for <laughs> teenage boys to still talk okay, about a dance <laughs> piece. You know, it's there's something yes, special. I'm in planning that to sauce. be there, but now I'm really going to pay attention to this. And Trocadero, oh, oh, man. another uh, yeah, the dance performance. The Troc right. Yeah. I, I, I saw them first perform. First time I saw them perform. Okay, explain what who oh, they are. Okay. okay. So the Trucks uh, are an all male dance company, uh, but they dance both the male and female parts of ballet. So they dance on point. Amazing it athletes, is... fabulous dancers, but it's tongue in cheek. There's a lot of humor in yes, the evening. Yes. First time I saw them, they followed the company's Palabolus and Momix. No one wants to follow Palabolus no, and Momix. because they're like just right. in their own realm. Right. Yes. And the Trox came out and they killed it. They owned the evening and um, I was sold from that oh, point wow. on. That takes us all the way to say April 2024. Yes. Yeah. And we're going to take another quick break. Thank you, Brian. Stay with us. We'll be right back. We're back discussing the University of Florida Performing Arts. And Brian, you have told us about so many great performances, and there's still more in this brochure for the season than we can touch on. But we have only covered a third of it. I know, way. I know. Yeah. There, there's so much more. It's a great read, by the way, <laughs> and beautifully done. But there's so much more also to the University of Florida Performing Arts than the main stage of the Phillips Center then we realize when we sit in that audience. And so uh, tell us more about all that goes on to outreach into our community. Great. The, uh, you're right. It's What's important, of course, is it's 7.30 p.m. or whatever the <laughs> artist starts. But it's equally important to us what they did off of the stage. How did exactly. they share their gifts with students on campus or in community or community groups? So most of our artists do something beyond the stage. They end up at a, a local elementary school, right. or they end up uh, uh, at a senior center, or of course classes across the UF campus. What a great opportunity, master classes with these artists. Exactly. Um, right. Opportunities for the kids in the classroom, which besides with artists, you bring students to the performances. Right. I mean, your whole art and classroom um, opportunities are, are pretty um, outstanding, are outstanding. And that's one of the roles of the Phillips Center is to ensure that young people get in the door and have that experience in a seat that stays with them a lifetime, whether it's a UFPA event or Dance Alive or our friends at the Gainesville Orchestra or Star Center Theater, those moments change lives. Well said. And, and what if you, you reach out to if, to the rural areas, the Rural Arts Initiative? Oh yeah, thank you. The Rural Arts Initiative is something we drum, dreamed up with our friends at, uh, mm -hmm. and, and the idea with Rural Arts Initiative is to take our artists to schools with populations in areas under 5,000 people. Schools that don't generally have a Tony Award winner, for instance, in their classroom or their right, cafetorium. Or so, or, uh, or can't even travel, don't travel to the performing arts or, or mm -hmm. in many times underserved populations. In the last year, they, we've been to Cedar Key, Williston, Bronson, Hawthorne, wow. Uh, wow. Keystone Heights, Trenton, Bell, uh, you uh, must get High it. Springs. It, right. it must be so wonderful for the artists to have this interaction and well, to see the, the ability to change lives through their art. It really is. And, you know, so many of these artists, they, they haven't been uh, to North Central Florida, let alone to all <laughs> That's true. You know, sort of east to west in North Central Florida. And uh, it's an amazing experience for the performer. They, they are changed by the moment as well as the students. I like knowing that. Mm -hmm. And then what about the driveway oh. project? Okay, so tell us. 
uh, something we cooked up. It's called the Driveway Theater Project. And uh, kind of like what it, so it sounds. <laughs> uh, but we take performance to your driveway or your cul-de-sac or your backyard or your side yard. And here's the thing. You get a professional performance, but it's free to the driveway user. The goal here is to build community through performance. Maybe sort of like the new block party. Yes. So you would, for instance, concept. host this in your driveway. Your job, it's the social capital to have your friends and neighbors there. Our job is to show up, provide performance so that you can really create community together. And we'd have oh, five or six different titles from uh, bridged Shakespeare to traditional Shakespeare to Dracula. I see different ones that, that you can choose from and uh, Depending on initiate. what you'd like for your neighbors and yourself, right? I, this is, I, I, you must have had some outstanding responses to this. Oh, it's very, okay. very popular, yes. uh, but we do this generally uh, starting in October in the okay. cooler months and, yes, and run it through May, but we can still do it indoor places, but the, the idea is to bring performance to people that maybe aren't comfortable coming to or haven't been to the Phillips Center. It's another way to, to expand to outreach, our reach. Yes, and to initiate people to the joy of performing arts in, the in, a, in another atmosphere. They don't even have to go anywhere. Their own atmosphere. <laughs> no, right. right. They, and bring their own chair, Br take a seat, have their libation, and enjoy it. BYOC, BYOB, <laughs> right? Yes, yes. But it, it is so important to expose everybody to the performing arts. And we're going to take yet again another break. Thank you, Brian. Stay with us. We'll be right back. We're talking with director Brian Jose, University of Florida Performing Arts. And Brian, one thing I always look forward to with any performance that you offer, a pre or post performance uh, conversation. Right. Tell us more about that. We think that's really important. It's an opportunity for context. So roughly 45 minutes before a performance starts on the main stage, you have an opportunity to hear from either the performer or, or a faculty member or a community member who have expertise in whatever that art form is. Right. And they may talk about the art form or they might talk about the context around the art form, but it's always fascinating, always enlightening. And to me, it adds so much more gravity when you sit there for the performance because it, it, it makes you connected to the artist on a whole different level. Right, much and, more appreciation and understanding. I always notice you have good attendance. I well, mean, they are well really attended. Well, really well attended. Yes. And then dance performances tend to go the other direction with <laughs> right. a post-performance conversation in a great way. You sit there and talk with the performers right. after they they're done. Right, they come out, line up right. on, on front of the stage for questions and answers. And, and, and I always find their answers to be fascinating and, and also just unexpected. <laughs> Yes, and who they are and how they got into what they're doing. Uh, right. What was their background? And, you know, uh, so many of them were athletes and, and the sport that they started with and ended up in being bitten by the dance bug. Right. And you just learn so much from it. So anytime you can avail yourself to a pre or post performing event, do so. It adds so much more to the evening. Well said. And because you're University of Florida, as we say, you also uh, appeal to the students. Uh, you're multi-generational in your choice of performances, but you have um, opportunities for students to attend. Right. Uh, as uh, Being part of the campus, it's important to us to offer artists that students want to see and then give them the means to do so. So student tickets are only $12. Excellent. Right. Uh, now, I uh, mean, granted, granted for the bigger Broadway shows, it's 20 but again, let's... What? No, a, I know. They, it, it gives a them, tenth of what it might <laughs> Right, we can't even get into New York, so right, we can't right. go there. So, right, but. So, but but the student tickets are a really important part of what we do. We uh, uh, it, it it's vital that can, that's you know attendance is is a behavior, and if we yes. don't get young people in the hall, well said, they yeah. won't be there in the future. So ensuring that the price is right for students to experience this, to me, ensures an audience for years to come. Yes, they, I. Uh, now that you have said that, I'm, I am looking at it with that point of view. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there are many ways that um, you interact with the community. You have sponsors, you have affiliates, 
uh, we thank them. Oh, uh, without a doubt. Affiliates are those that make a contribution to UFPA and sponsors, of course, make a gift to ensure a performance gets to the stage. Yes. These things don't happen no. without their largesse. I'm here to tell you the performing arts landscape is quite different without donors. And I see a lot of the same names year after year. I thank them personally. I know many of them and I, I am grateful. And you, you have a student, a student, excuse me, affiliate level also. Again. Which is right. outstanding. If, you know. if students learn that behavior early, we believe it'll carry on through life. Right. I, I, I think that is, I, I went to performances as a little girl, so I've always, it's my number one thing, a live performance, and I thank my parents. And even though that's that 15 years ago. Yeah, you, oh, well, you, thank you, Brian. <laughs> you, you remember every nuance of that oh, performance, do. don't you? I do, right. yes. It's it, seared in your memory. It is, and I think that's what makes live performance just so important in our lives. I, I know it's a commitment that you share with many in this community. Decidedly. Yes, because... Um, it engages everyone. It, it, it is a way that it increases our humanity, uh, our knowledge of people, our understanding. We, we've said that we have a diverse community, but the arts and performances um, bring that diversity together. I believe that 30, 40, 50 years from now, maybe we'll be wearing helmets on our head, but we'll still be gathering together for performance because it's that that gravity of being together in this space, experiencing it, that will never grow old. Uh, I agree. And I want to thank you for uh, being such a wonderful guest and above all for an outstanding 2023-2024 season coming up at the Phillips Center and the University of Florida Performing Arts. We look forward to it. Thank you very much. And I hope I will see you at a performance. I'll be looking for you. And I'm so glad you tuned in. And I hope you'll join us next time. Take care.